digital assets, another very different topic, really important, really important to consider in your estate planning and in your client's estate planning. I think I mentioned this before. My wife is a CFO of a company. She refuses to use online banking for our personal stuff, but she's now considering doing it because she almost has to with the, the level of transactions that she's doing um, at the company. It's just expanded you know, dramatically. So she said, uh, I, I, I'm going to have to you know, start using online banking. I said, are you going to use it for our personal stuff too, please? No. I don't trust, I don't trust any. The rest of the world, they, you know, everybody else is using online banking to automatic from automatic deposit, which we do do, to paying bills, online payment of bills, banks, your credit cards, credit card payments, put using a credit card that is in your iPhone, Apple Pay. You know, think of all the different ways we use it, and online retailers. I had to buy my mother flowers for her birthday, and I, every time I have to go back and re-register the credit card because my wife just it's ingrained in me: do not leave your credit card on any site. Just enter it once, and then don't save it. Okay, okay. But you know, a lot of us do do that for convenience purposes, and you know, in some ways it may be protected, in other ways it may not. But hey, we use these financial accounts. It's online. The data is digital. We have online accounts. We all use social media in one way or another, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever. We also store documents in the cloud. Well, the cloud is digital asset is a digital asset. If we use Google Docs, we use iCloud, we use Dropbox or Box. Our assets, our documents, our photos, our recordings that are stored in these places, those are digital assets, not under our direct control. And then of course, email, non-web-based, which is what the way we operate here, where we have our own internal servers, or web-based, like Gmail or Yahoo. So the first thing you do is you sit down and you write down all of your places where you've got digital assets. You get your client to do that. Now, some, again, there's a, there's a new uh, app I just saw yesterday. Uh, oh, I have it written down here, actually. Let's see if I can find it. There's a new app, and there's several other apps. One password. Anybody using that? Supposedly, it's just the hottest new iPhone app for storing passwords, credit card information, extremely secure, etc. Um, e wallet. Anybody using that? Last pass. Last pass. I've heard good things about that. And then M secure. Okay, so these are all different apps that are available for Android or iPhones or whatever, where you can store all your stuff. My first reaction was, what happens if I lose my phone or somebody steals it? What happens to my passwords? Well, I know it's hard to, to break into an iPhone, okay. But what if that's my only source? There's usually a password to get into that. Yeah, yeah, there's a password to get into the app. But uh, the question is, what happens if you lose your phone and all your passwords are stored, and I know they're stored in the cloud somewhere. I, I haven't really thought this one through. You can, but a, you can access all of them on a desktop. On a desktop, okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. So you can access it all on a desktop. But again, how do I protect you know, my heirs? How do I protect my spouse? And some of us may have secret accounts. What happens to those? <laughs> I'm not going to get into that today, but we, we will talk about identifying all the assets. Create a list of all the 
places that you use. You know, we've gone, you know, you, you probably have used a dozen shopping sites online or more, maybe two dozen. I go to swimoutlet.com, I go to Amazon, I go to, you know, whatever, you know, Vivino, you know, to buy wine. I, I go all over the internet. I'm like shopping on the internet. I don't like to go in stores. I like to shop on the internet. Don't you? I mean, it's, it's much, so much more fun. It's easier. I don't have to get up and walk around in a mall. And, you know, but, you know, whatever. So <laughs> the idea is that uh, it's, it's a lot easier. Do your, your holiday shopping online. So I can't remember all the sites I've been to. I try to keep a, a record of it. But that's the first thing you do. Second thing you do is store it. Whether it's with an estate planning lawyer or the financial planning firm, you all may have an online bank that you're using to secure your client's information. This could be a good place for it, as long as it's really, really, really safe and protected. And how do you know if it's really, really, really safe and protected? You don't. Because people can hack anything at any time. Okay, so with that being said, why yeah. would you have to physically write it down and then put it in a safe That's what I do. I have I have my stuff written down in a safe place. Okay. And and then then if you're gonna use an online storage facility for your passwords and doc, docu, document information, your on your digital assets, um, okay, that's your choice. If you're gonna do it in hard copy. Putting in a safe deposit box may be a little tricky unless you made sure that your revocable trust owns the safe or has the lease on the safe deposit box or the power of attorney clearly references the safe deposit box where you've actually named somebody to gain access. And fewer and fewer people are using safe deposit boxes because banks are offering them less and charging more for it. Access to safe deposit boxes has become more difficult in the last 10 years. And so, any of it, put it in, in, your, in your safe at your home. Put it in a safe place. Uh, but then make sure that somebody knows where it is if you're going to use it in hard copy. But wait a second. Okay, so I left all these passwords in the safe or the safe deposit box. Do I have the right? to get access to somebody else's accounts, digital assets. Do I just have the right to do it? Legally, no. If someone dies and you are their personal representative or their trustee, do you automatically have the right to get access to the digital assets? In Virginia, which is, uh, a little behind the times on this particular issue, it has to be stated in your will that your personal representative affirmatively has access to your digital assets. Under the Uniform Digital Asset Transfer Act that is, is being enacted in states now all around the country, but only in 13 states so far, um, it can be in your revocable trust. It can be in your power of attorney. So when we do the planning, we actually put a, a paragraph in the revocable trust, in the power of attorney, and in the will for Virginia residents, and we do it for Maryland too, it doesn't really matter, we just put it everywhere. It says, whoever your agent is under your power of attorney, whoever your trustee is under your trust, whoever your uh, personal representative is under, under your will, has the right to gain access to all my financial accounts, my email accounts, anything that's web-based, anything that's app-related, anything that's in the cloud. And we actually list out, not the actual sites, because that's going to change over time, but the type of uh, digital asset that we know of today, we list out as many things as we possibly can in that paragraph. You've seen our trust. You have our, our trust. You have our trust. You should, you should see a paragraph in there that talks about digital assets. Do you have the same Maryland is more relaxed. You can do it in the trust. You can also do it in a power of attorney. That's why we, we put it in everything. 
and we hope that Virginia will evolve to that. And the financial power of attorney revocable trust, even in the HIPAA authorization if necessary, but usually the HIPAA authorization is also in the trust. So the benefit of doing this, what if I put all my photos up in iCloud, which I do now, because it's so much easier. I back up everything to the cloud. I, I'll lose my family history if I haven't planned for my digital assets. I also have music that I have purchased or acquired, and I've got you know, 10,000 songs. It's in, in the cloud. I've got radio broadcasts that I've done over the last, and podcasts over the last 12, 15 years. All that stuff's in the cloud now. So I want to make sure that people have access to it if they ever want to use it again. And it permits the transfer of your digital assets, particularly the stuff that you really want to transfer, the music, the photos, the memories to your kids or whoever you want to transfer. 